In this video we're going to reassemble the OSFS-52. I have a hot crankcase here. Uh, in the last video the front bearing didn't come out and for what I was doing I didn't need to remove it so I left it in. Uh, I have the crankshaft with the bearing already in place. Uh, it was a tight fit and needed to be pressed on. Um, if you pre have to press the bearing onto the uh, crankcase make sure you square things correctly and press on only the inter inner race. Uh, to prevent damage. Crankcase is hot, bearing slips right in. Take a look to make sure that it's uh, fully seated. It is. You can just set it down and let it cool off at this point. Often the connecting rod will only uh, go into the engine one way. Uh, in the case of the OS uh, FS52, the uh, crank pin bore in the, in the rod is uh, chamfered on only one side. That chamfer faces towards the crank web in the engine. Uh, slip the uh, rod through the uh, cylinder bore over the crank pin. You can turn it around to uh, put the uh, piston in. Piston, uh, make sure your ring is installed if you've uh, changed the ring. If you have uh, are taking apart a used engine, um, it is best to note the orientation of the piston uh, before removing it so that you can reinstall it in the same direction. Uh, in this case the piston is new and uh, I did not bother in the disassembly video. The uh, wrist pin has uh, Teflon uh, pads in either end. Uh, in this case uh, make sure you reinstall them uh, to prevent uh, cylinder damage. This is a little tricky. You need to uh, wind things up to get things to go through. There we go. You don't you want to push it just so it's flush with the side of the uh, piston. If you push it in too far, uh, the sleeve will be difficult to uh, reinstall. The crankcase is still a little warm. The sleeve will slip right in. At this point, we want to add some oil to help things along. Inside the cylinder, inside the cylinder bore also. Um, or slips right in. If you wiggle things around, the uh, piston ring will fall right in. There we go. To install the uh, camshaft, set the uh, the engine at uh, top dead center. The camshaft has a small dot on on the face uh, of the gear that uh, that is visible when it's installed. We're going to use the the tubing again to install the cam. Slip it over the uh, the bearing surface. The cam twists a little bit as it goes into the helical gears. You'll want to pay attention. The dot needs to line up on the axis between the uh, the center of the crank and the push rod tubes to be lined up correctly. At this point, I like to put some oil into the uh, cam area. Reinstall the cover finger tight at this point. Uh, lifters will go in. Some oil into the lifter bores. Before installing the back plate we'll put some oil into the engine the bearing, the, uh, the bushings. I usually lubricate the, uh, the piston before assembling it. We'll put some extra oil in there. Make sure all, all of the, uh, make sure all the bearing surfaces are, are lubricated for the first startup. 
install the cover. Uh, screws are just finger tight right now. I'll be uh, torquing things a little later. The uh, Make sure you reinstall the head gasket. Um, as long as it's in good condition, I find you can normally reuse them. If it is warped or, or badly damaged, uh, it's best to uh, replace it. A little bit of oil on the, uh, the head gasket will keep it in place in the cylinder head. We will reinstall the valves. Um, oil on the stems. Intake valve. Spring. Spring seat. And uh, spring keeper. Valve keeper. There we go. When working with the valves, I've got my finger on the over the valve on the back side.